Hi everyone, I'm Faisal Bazzi and I'm an ambassador for MIF 68 and a half and today I am delighted to be talking to the film team for She Dies Tomorrow. That's director and writer Amy Seemetz and actor Kate Lynchiel. Welcome Amy and Kate. Hello, thank you. Let me start by saying I was lucky enough to watch the film a couple of days ago and um, I thought it was wonderful and intense and um, something that's kind of stayed with me over the last couple of days. Um, forcing me to reflect on my life and my life choices. Uh, a story like this as well, in a time like this, it, it's actually quite timely. What inspired you to make this film to start with? Was there, was there a seed of inspiration that kind of led you to this? And did you foresee us living in a world like this and um, it being so um, relevant? Yeah, I saw all those things. Um... <laughs> <laughs> You're incredible. Yeah. So good. Everyone that works with me knows I see the future and I'm great at it. Uh, <laughs> this is why I make so many good life choices. Um, but <laughs> no, but, but there's there is this sort of interesting trend that like Kate and I have talked about. All of us on set would talk about of 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 you know this grow. I mean, I was dealing. I was trying to itch at my own existential dread and and anxiety that I that I was talking with my friends Kate and Jane in the movie who are my friends in real life and and the the fear that I was spreading anxiety to them but we also live in in such a time that like you know every um because of social media and because of the 24-hour news networks that like every few days it's like wildfire and everyone's like it's the end of the world it's the end of the democracy it's the, end of, it's the end of everything it's the end of everything and then three days later you like when you if you haven't t tuned in then you're like wait what happened and they're like we're on to something next the next thing is the end of the world and the, and like whether you're right left center it doesn't matter it's just it's it's so it just feels like every day, like the news and, and Twitter and social media and everything is just like sort of it is is like telling you like, you know, it's the end of the world every five seconds. And there's some kernels of truth in it, uh, underneath there, but like getting to it with this wildfire, it feels like impossible because we're all just sort of spreading these 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 fear based like sort of headlines. And that was that was sort of what I was trying to get to while trying to get to the root of my own anxiety in a way. You said the film touches on themes of contagion and fear. Um, do you think that the climate we find ourselves in now makes it more resonant and frame helps frame the work? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. Here's the the truth is is I don't know the answer to that question because I haven't had an experience of strangers viewing the film outside of COVID. So I, so I, I don't, I have no idea. Like, who knows if if people would understand it um, if if this wasn't going on. But at, at the same time, I think I think there's enough in the. I, I mean, this is me saying that. It's like it's it's like a child. Like you, inst you try to instill it with a, as many ideas as you as you you want while you're like raising it, and and you know, uh, before it goes out into the world on its own. And hopefully, hopefully it engages with people on in the way that you tried to like bring it up, right? Um, and sometimes it fails, but but I but you have no idea what's going to happen in the world, and you can't really control it. So, but I'd be curious to hear what Kate feels when she's like having conversations. Yeah, like were you in a different world? Do you find the conversations interesting, Kate, knowing that? you probably experience a different thing making it and living in it. And when people kind of now connecting it to the real world here, there's part of you say, oh, I, I didn't actually have that layered into my performance, but it's great that it's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's obviously a very, um, it's an incredibly strange thing to have made a movie, you know, a year ago um, that sort of, dealt with themes of isolation and anxiety and, um, and of course, uh, a pandemic, something spreading uh, while, you know, 
Amy's concept of sort of the way that ideas spread, uh, obviously it's relevant to what's um, what's happening now. So it, yeah, it's, it's very strange to have the movie coming out at this time, but it also, so I think like Amy said, you, you make something and then the way that it's received is sort of a little bit out of your hands. So um, while it's strange that the movie is so relevant to an experience that uh, so many people in the world are, are having, it also um, is, is, is just, uh, it's strange to have anybody see your work ever when you make it in sort of an insular environment. And then it's like, okay, well now, now it's yours and you can think about it or say about it or feel about it, whatever you'd like. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. It's, it's simultaneously very strange and also just the way that things go, I, I guess. What's funny, Kate knows this, is that I maybe haven't brought this up in, enough in press, but what, what's funny about the movie is we just called it secret movie until we just called we just refer to it as secret movie until um we were we had to put out a press release that we got into south by southwest and so and it was secret like we didn't you know like the normal thing when you do that you like put out a like a press release that this person's cast and this person's cast and this person's cast. And I didn't want any of those things because I really liked the secret nature of it because it didn't give, sometimes when like people have an idea of a film, I, th I think what, like beforehand, they're like, oh, it's called She Dies Tomorrow. It's gonna be this, the, and then they like start to build up what it's going to be. And, and then when they watch the movie, they don't have a fresh experience of it. And so I, I just wanted to keep it secret for so long, not just because of the way people would view it, but also because it felt so special and it was such a small, tight knit group of people making it that it felt like our little secret where we could just like make these very weird choices and we didn't have to explain it to anyone. We didn't have to explain what the movie was. So like she was saying, it's like, it's very strange. In addition to the fact that like, I've always likened, like I wasn't acting in this, but I've always likened when you perform in something like dancing alone in your house and then you suddenly realize the whole, entire neighborhood is watching you when it screens, you know, where you're just like, oh yeah, I forgot, people are gonna be watching. <laughs> you know, it, 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 in addition to that, this had an extra layer of like, we were like, this is our little secret. And it was like sort of fun and, 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 and our little nugget of something that we would look forward to making because we made it in these chunks together. I love how funny this film is as well. It, it was, it, so the comedy surprised me just because I, with, from the title, once I kind of started playing it, I did think it was going to be a real serious kind of thing. And um, Kate, your performance is so beautiful in this. And um, you're so funny. Um, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to ask: is, was, Did you um, did you look at any other references or other narratives that helped you um, conceptualize this? Like uh, watching it, I was kind of taken to Twin Peaks at some stages, the two thousand and one space Odyssey, like in moments, you know. Uh, it, it, yeah, I just want to know what your creative process was to, in creating this beast of a film. Unlike a lot of other work that I've done, where I have like references, you know, uh, this was this was truly and I'm not going to say that I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not, uh, that I'm immune to, to sort of like, um, aping the catalog of films that I've seen in the back of my brain, but there was no intention. Like with, with Sun and Shine, we had like a lot of like, it was like very much Wanda, Tulane Blacktop and Badlands and, and all of these like seventies, like movies and, and this Americana in a way. Um, uh, or accessing that level of Americana uh, that 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 I loved about American cinema in during those times, and uh, but with a female spin on it, and but but this one I, I really because I was writing for for television and I because every time I have to explain a film I have to come up with comps right and I have to be like it's like this meets this and this meets that you know like in order to sell a movie or sell a television show or whatever, like I, I just like, sometimes I, I start to like make jokes to myself and I'll just like say random things depending on the pitch. Cause I'm just like, what gives me money? Yeah. You know, to make this thing. Uh, I was just so tired of that, that I, that I just wanted to get back to 
sort of an instinctual part of, of, of filmmaking with, with Kate and with Jay Keitel, the, the cinematographer who, who I've worked with for so long, is one of the wonderful things about working, you know, and, and working with, with people for so long is that you all, when you were younger, you were doing that to learn how to make films. And you, the only reference points was like, like, like early on, Kate and I talked about Isabella Ajani's performance in, in Zuelski's Possession when we were talking about, you know, like Sundown China, you know, like there are these conversations because you only have these reference points with your filmmaker friends, but then you, 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 you have, you build this friendship, but you also build this uh, professional friendship and in aesthetic friendship. And in addition to that, they've all gone off and made tons of work. So they, so it's, it's basically like working um, on this scale, like working with people who have gone to the Olympics and are like, let's see what we can do with these skills, you know, and not necessarily every day being like, this coach taught me this like triple backflip, you know, and, but, but like you, you, they, they're able to do it and you just like reap all the benefits the same way that like when I go off and do stuff, it's like, I, I was trying not to be like so concretely referential, but there's definitely, you know, of course Lynch and of course, you know, of course 2001 and, 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 but there's a, there's a lot of just like sort of discovery that we were having while making the film. I, I feel like Kate can say the same thing. Yeah, certainly. I mean, it, to my mind, when I came into it, you had um, a very clear idea of what you, you wanted me to do, and it seemed to come from a, a very personal place. Do you know what I mean? That you love so much, not to speak for you, but uh, I love that you love working in genre, um, but to make a movie that is uh, rooted in genre, but also coming from a deeply personal place was was uh very exciting to me um but yeah we didn't nearly as much as on sun don't shine talk about what our um like filmic points of reference were interesting you should say that i, I did read in some interviews amy that um you said you put a lot of yourself in the, the main character um, how much of it is your own experience and kate uh, how is it playing that when it's the directors put so much of themselves into something um, and not playing like a caricature of them or a, like, a, you know, a version of them. Well, I would tell Kate how to walk and talk. <laughs> I was like, I wouldn't walk like that. The character of Amy would never do that. I mean, that's the thing is it, 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 it was, it's accessing something. I mean, obviously it's, it's not me, but like it's accessing something that I, the, of, a, a version of myself that I can't, an experience of myself, let's put it that way. It's an experience of myself that I can't that that words have boundaries for. Like words have boundaries that I can't I can't get to the feeling of an experience. And the movie is supposed to be an experience, right? Or or, or you don't know that, but there's, it's supposed to be an experience of what I'm experiencing, not necessarily like. And then at age five, I like thought I was you know they they diagnosed me as like ADD, you know, like I wasn't not like that literal or like uh, uh like i didn't like hand over to kate like here's my life story <laughs> now embody it. <laughs> it it was much more ethereal doesn't doesn't give kate credit enough but but but, but touching on something that i couldn't quite uh put into words and trying to translate it through visuals and then performance, which Kate is so brilliant at anyways. I mean, we did it in Sundown Shine as well. It was, a, it was a lot more, I don't want to say clinical, but a lot more, uh, uh, how do we say it? A lot more pulpy in, in its exploration of a, a thriller in a way of the, in terms of the performance. Um, and so this, so yeah, I'll, I'll let Kate take it from there. Yeah, when I say that it's a deeply personal movie, um, I don't mean uh, in a factual way, I guess. I mean in a way that Amy and I have been um, friends for a very long time. And um, yeah, she was trying to describe an experience or a feeling that maybe isn't um, uh, best articulated by words. Do you know what I mean? And so, but that's something um, 
having known each other for such a long time, there's sort of a shorthand there where it's like, okay, this, this is what I'm, this is what I'm getting at. And I, um, and after much tutelage from a very generous director, I, I understand what she's talking about, but yeah, no, I, I, it's not like I studied Amy's behavior or anything like that, but I also, um, <laughs> we, we do know each other very well. And so in a way, um, you know, I'm able to be informed by, by my friend, um, and, uh, to sort of know where they're coming from without it being like, you know, I'm studying Amy's biography. Yeah, and, and and on that, because you have been friends for so long and you've worked together for... For 40 years, is that what you were trying to say? 40 years, <laughs> yeah. You both look amazing. Um, what, is there a different process with working together compared to other directors and actors, just because you know each other so well? Is it, um, is it easier, I guess? Um, I would say, yeah, there's definitely a shorthand in terms of, um, you know, points of reference, which I, we just said that we didn't um, talk about at length during this shoot. But um, yeah, I think we, we know what movies um, the other one might be uh, thinking of in the back of their mind or what generally are sort of North Star inspiration movies. Um, but also we just know one another extremely well. And so there is, um, you know, you can you can sort of say it's like when this thing happened, and you're like, yeah, okay, I think I think I understand what you're saying. But also, I want to say about Amy in general, outside of our friendship, she's an incredible director, um, and working for her is, I would say, my favorite working experience. Um, so, so in that way, even outside of our friendship, it's just an extreme pleasure to to get to work with her. Kate's ignoring the explosive fights that we have on set. <laughs> Please tell me about them. <laughs> you asked me not to talk about. It. I can't keep a straight face. I can do comedy, but like I can't. Keep, I, I really want to start rumors that we have this Klaus Kinski like her butter her dog like relationship. Um, but it's just not true. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's, in addition, in addition to our working relationship, and and like, like she's saying, is like they're like the north star of of the, of the things that we that we watch. There's like a there's a taste similarity, and and the things that we respond to, um, and performances we respond to, the visuals we respond to, and then there's also just socially because we be, we've become such good friends. There's also like being at parties and being like, did you see the like you know like a like uh, there's also just socially like our sense of humor is the same is the same and it's always like a little has a little edge of poison with it you know and and so there's that where it's like remember at that part you know i can direct her sometimes like remember at the party we saw and she's like yep and then she just like does it you know like she just like she's like got it and then like that i don't even have to finish a sentence and sometimes there's like a lot of like i, I feel like directing kate is like telling kate secrets it's like we we like I, I'm like I'm like I take her aside like you're supposed to direct this way I guess you know you're supposed to be like quiet to your actor but like really the, like if there's a true like remember we're not supposed to talk about and da, 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 like scratching up that like we don't we don't have to I don't have to I, I can say it to Kate in secret and she can emote it and nobody has to know what we're talking about yeah you know that's great it's, it's fun it's I mean it's fun to me I mean maybe for Kate's torture, but... Um. <laughs> We're so lucky to be able to see it down here. Thank you so much for bringing it to MIF, and it was such a pleasure to talk to you. Kate and Amy, much love. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.